Hey there, food lovers. Welcome back to our channel. Today we're diving into the 70s to uncover 10 food traditions that have vanished from the family table. From jello molds to fondue parties, these culinary customs defined an era but have since faded into history. In the 70s, a unique and colorful dish called aspic became quite popular in the United States. Aspic is essentially a gelatin mold that encases various ingredients, usually vegetables, meats, or seafood, within a clear, savory jelly. This culinary creation wasn't new to the 70s. It has roots dating back to medieval Europe. However, it truly found its stride in American kitchens during this decade. Popular cookbooks of the time, such as the Betty Crocker Cookbook and The Joy of Cooking, featured numerous aspic recipes. Brands like Jell-O even marketed savory gelatin flavors specifically for aspic dishes, capitalizing on the trend. One memorable example is the tomato aspic, a gelatin mold flavored with tomato juice and filled with vegetables like celery, olives, and green peppers. There were also more elaborate versions, such as shrimp aspic or chicken liver pate in aspic, which showcased the era's experimental spirit in the kitchen. Magazines like Better Homes and Gardens and Good Housekeeping frequently showcased these aspic creations, encouraging readers to try their hand at this fashionable dish. Beef Wellington was a shining star on American dinner tables and restaurant menus in the 70s. This elegant dish, originating from England, became a symbol of culinary sophistication in the United States during this decade. Beef Wellington consists of a tender filet mignon coated with pâté and duxelle, a finely chopped mixture of mushrooms, onions, and herbs, then wrapped in puff pastry and baked to perfection. The dish gained widespread popularity in the 70s, thanks in part to its frequent appearances at high-end dinner parties and special occasions. The rise of celebrity chefs like Julia Child also contributed to its fame. Child, with her influential television show, The French Chef, introduced many Americans to sophisticated European recipes, including beef wellington. It was often associated with luxury and the good life, served at lavish gatherings and celebrations. Brands like Pepperidge Farm even capitalized on its popularity by offering ready-made puff pastry, making it slightly more accessible for home cooks eager to try their hand at this gourmet dish. Deviled ham, this savory spread, characterized by its finely ground ham mixed with a blend of spices, mustard, and mayonnaise, was a convenient and tasty option for sandwiches, crackers, and appetizers. The term deviled refers to the zesty and spicy seasoning that gives the ham its distinctive flavor. One of the most famous brands during this time was Underwood Deviled Ham. Recognizable by its iconic white paper wrapper with a red devil logo, Underwood had been producing deviled ham since the late 19th century. By the 70s, it had become synonymous with the dish itself. The product's longevity and popularity were partly due to its convenience and shelf stability, making it a perfect pantry item. Deviled ham was not just a snack, it was a symbol of the era's culinary trends, which favored quick, easy-to-prepare foods that fit into the busy lifestyles of modern families. It was common to see recipes in magazines and cookbooks that incorporated deviled ham into various dishes, from deviled ham salad to baked deviled ham casserole. In the 70s, Mock turtle soup was a notable dish in the United States, known for its unique history and flavors. Originating in the 18th century, this soup was created as an affordable alternative to green turtle soup, which was a delicacy at the time. Instead of using actual turtle meat, mock turtle soup employed calf's head and other meats to mimic the rich, hearty flavor of the original. Brands like Campbell's and Heinz offered canned versions of mock turtle soup, making it easily accessible. These versions typically included beef or veal, along with a blend of spices and vegetables, to recreate the traditional taste. The soup was popular for its savory, comforting qualities, often served as a starter in both homes and restaurants. Cincinnati, Ohio, was particularly famous for its love of mock turtle soup, with local producers like Worthmore Soup Company keeping the tradition alive with their own recipes. 
Ambrosia salad was a staple at American family gatherings, particularly during holidays and potlucks in the 70s. This creamy, fruit-filled dish expressed the era's love for quick, convenient, and visually appealing foods. Ambrosia salad, a mix of canned fruits, marshmallows, and coconut folded into whipped cream or sour cream, was the epitome of the convenience food trend of the time. The origins of ambrosia salad trace back to the late 19th century, but it gained immense popularity in the mid-20th century, peaking during the 70s. The salad's name, ambrosia, refers to the food of the gods in Greek mythology, suggesting a heavenly treat. This dessert salad often included ingredients like mandarin oranges, pineapple chunks, maraschino cherries, and miniature marshmallows. Some variations also incorporated nuts or cottage cheese. Brands like Dole and Del Monte capitalized on the popularity of ambrosia salad by promoting their canned fruit products as ideal ingredients. Jell-O, another popular brand at the time, sometimes found its way into more experimental versions of the salad. In the 70s, stuffed celery was a popular appetizer in American households. This dish, simple yet elegant, involved filling crisp celery stalks with a variety of tasty fillings. Most commonly, the stuffing was a mixture of cream cheese blended with spices, pimentos, olives, or even crunchy nuts. Another popular variant included peanut butter, which appealed especially to children. This dish fit perfectly into the era's culinary trends, which emphasized convenience and simplicity. The rise of processed foods and ready-to-use ingredients made stuffed celery an easy and quick addition to any party platter or family dinner. Brands like Kraft and Philadelphia Cream Cheese often promoted recipes for stuffed celery in their advertising, contributing to its popularity. Stuffed celery also featured prominently in cookbooks and magazines of the time. Betty Crocker's Picture Cookbook and Good Housekeeping magazines frequently included stuffed celery recipes, highlighting its versatility and appeal. The dish was not only easy to prepare but also visually appealing, adding a touch of sophistication with minimal effort. Pigs in a Blanket This simple yet tasty dish featured small sausages wrapped in dough, often a biscuit or croissant. It was a favorite at parties, potlucks, and family gatherings due to its easy preparation and universal appeal. One of the key factors in the rise of pigs in a blanket was the convenience offered by ready-made dough products. Brands like Pillsbury and their refrigerated crescent rolls made it easier than ever for home cooks to whip up a batch of these savory treats. The little sausages, often from brands like Hilshire Farm or Oscar Mayer, were just the right size for wrapping. In some regions, they were made with mini hot dogs or cocktail sausages, while in others, breakfast sausages were the preferred choice. This adaptability contributed to their widespread popularity. Despite their popularity in the 70s, pigs in a blanket began to fade from the culinary spotlight in the following decades. In the 70s, the United States saw a unique culinary trend that combined breakfast cereal with savory dinner recipes. One such dish was the Frosted Flakes Chicken. This quirky creation involved coating chicken pieces in crushed Frosted Flakes cereal before baking or frying them. The idea was simple yet innovative, combining the sweet crunch of the cereal with the savory taste of chicken. The dish became popular thanks to the creativity of home cooks and the influence of major brands like Kellogg's, the makers of Frosted Flakes. Kellogg's, capitalizing on the cereal's success as a breakfast favorite, began to promote it as a versatile ingredient. Recipes featuring frosted flakes in various dishes, including chicken, appeared in magazines and on cereal boxes, enticing families to experiment in the kitchen. Chicken pieces were first dipped in a beaten egg mixture, then rolled in crushed frosted flakes until well coated. The coated chicken was then baked or fried until golden and crispy. This method offered a fun twist on traditional fried chicken, providing a sweet and crunchy alternative. Chicken a la King was a beloved dish in American households, epitomizing comfort food and convenience. This creamy chicken dish, typically made with diced chicken, mushrooms, green peppers, and pimentos in a rich cream sauce, was often served over toast, rice, or noodles. 
Its origins are somewhat disputed, with claims ranging from chefs at the Brighton Beach Hotel in New York to the Bellevue Hotel in Philadelphia, dating back to the early 20th century. It was a staple at dinner parties and a favorite for home cooks, thanks to its ease of preparation and versatility. Canned versions of Chicken a la King were widely available from popular brands like Campbell's and Swanson, making it even more accessible. These products allowed busy families to enjoy a quick and satisfying meal without spending hours in the kitchen. The dish also made its way into school cafeterias and hospital menus, appreciated for its mild flavors and nourishing ingredients. The dish was often highlighted in cookbooks and women's magazines, which touted it as an elegant yet straightforward option for any occasion. Potato skins emerged as a popular dish in the United States in the 70s, captivating the hearts and taste buds of many. This simple yet delectable appetizer found its origins in the kitchens of restaurants, particularly TGI Fridays, which is often credited with introducing this savory snack to the masses. The potatoes were baked until the skin became crispy, then these were filled with a medley of toppings. Typically, these toppings included melted cheese, crispy bacon bits, and a dollop of sour cream. The combination was irresistible, a crunchy, cheesy, and savory bite that quickly became a favorite bar food and party snack. Potato skins were more than just a tasty treat. They symbolized the 70s American dining culture, which celebrated casual and fun eating experiences. Restaurants and bars across the country started offering their own versions, each adding a unique twist. The dish was a perfect companion to the burgeoning popularity of televised sports, making it a staple in sports bars and during game nights. Brands like TGI Fridays played a significant role in popularizing potato skins. Potato skins were also featured in popular cookbooks and magazines, encouraging home cooks to try their hand at making this delightful appetizer. If you enjoyed this trip down memory lane, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and share it with your friends and family. We'd love to hear your thoughts and any forgotten food traditions you remember, so leave a comment below.